We're on a flight westbound from Opelika in Miami to Fort Myers, Florida. Even though the local terrain in South Florida is low-lying and flat, we're up at a high VFR cruising altitude at 8,500. Why? Because we're doing a straight shot across the Everglades, and we want to stay within gliding distance of the few airports and lone highway along our flight route so we don't end up ditching in the swamp with the alligators. Being up this high, we want to plan our descent from far enough out that we don't overshoot the airport, but not too far out that we're spending too much time down low staring at those gators. Foreflight can help us plan when to start our descent. First, we're going to open up the flight plan view. If we look at the profile, we see our airplane up at the cruise altitude. We also see the climb and descent depicted. The descent starts where it does based on the performance profile of the aircraft that we've selected. We have the Cessna 172 programmed in here, so if you have a different aircraft or don't have the aircraft profile programmed, this will look different. We could do a long tap and bring up a line to place on the beginning or top of descent as shown on the profile. We can scroll on the map to see where it sits along our route. It shows the point as 63 miles from our departure point. We'd like to know how far it is from our destination so we can tell when to start our descent. There's a few ways to do this. If we drag the point to the destination, it shows as 88 miles from departure. If we then scroll back to the top of descent, which is about 62 miles, we could take the difference. So the descent should start 26 miles from the destination. Another way to do this is with the ruler function so you don't have to do the math, but this way is a bit more precise. If we want to insert a waypoint for this top of descent, we can go into edit the flight plan, tap on the destination, then select an along track offset. We'll put in the 26 miles we calculated. This puts in a waypoint along our flight route 26 miles from the destination, our top of descent point. We can confirm by going into the profile view again and seeing that the new waypoint is right there at the top of descent point. Of course we can do descent planning with the G1000 too. There's a few ways to do this. An easy way is to pull up the destination on the PFD and do it from there, but a more complete way is to go into the flight plan on the MFD. The route is very simple, just the origin and destination listed. Notice next to the destination, KRSW, there's a blank entry with feet. This can be used for vertical navigation. We want to descend to the airport, which is around sea level. We'll put in 100 feet for a buffer. There are ways to get more sophisticated with this, like setting pattern altitude and moving it back about 3 to 5 miles from the airport, but this method will actually accomplish that too. We've told the unit we want to descend to 100 feet at the airport. This will have us arrive at 1,000 feet, pattern altitude, about 3 to 4 miles prior. What's been populated now is an active VNAV profile. It shows the top of descent is 16 minutes away. It also lists the top of descent on the map now too. We can calculate where the G1000 top of descent point is. Right now, it's about 27 miles from our position. The destination is about 52 miles away. So the difference, 25 miles, is how far the top of descent is from the destination. Very close to what ForeFlight calculated. So understand that the top of descent on ForeFlight and the one on the G1000 MFD are not the same waypoint geographically. The way we calculated them is similar, so they should be close, but for navigation, the G1000 is what should control. The ForeFlight one serves as a situational awareness tool. We could update the ForeFlight point to 25 miles as the G1000 calculated, but even then, there will be some difference in positioning. As we approach, we see the top of descent show less than 4 minutes. When we get 1 minute away, vertical track mode comes on. There's a bottom of descent altitude, the 100 feet we entered, sitting to the right of the bugged 8,500 foot altitude. We're not descending to 100 feet, we want to go down to pattern altitude, ideally a few miles prior to the field, so we bug 1,000 feet. We'll also push VNAV on the autopilot to arm vertical navigation. When we reach top of descent, vertical path mode goes active and we begin the descent, managing with a power reduction. Once we're in a stabilized descent, we can check over on the MFD to see how well we've planned this out. The selected altitude arc shows where on our route we'll hit the selected altitude of 1,000 feet. It's just a few miles from the airport, just as we want, which will give us time to level off and make a pattern entry. Notice our descent has started pretty close to where ForeFlight has calculated that 26 mile out point to be. So from here, we'll just manage the descent. As we get lower, we get a look at the glades a bit closer and realize we're glad we didn't descend too early and have to make a prolonged, low-level flight over this no-man's land. 
We arrive at 1000, level off, and wait for Fort Myers Tower to issue us a pattern entry. There's so many ways to do descent planning, and this was just one of them, which Foreflight can make a bit easier as we've demonstrated. Be sure to keep training with us no matter your level or ratings at Flight Insight Ground Schools, linked here and in the description.